morning, church. Good to see everybody out for our friends and family day. This opportunity has been set aside for those who need to make a confession. We afford you that opportunity so your worship service may not be hindered. Any confessions? Stand where you are, Rich. Raise your hand. If there's none, let us pray. Our Father, we thank you, Father, for being such a wonderful, caring, and gracious God. We thank you for our last night lying down and allowing us to awake this morning, Father, with the spirit to come out and worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you so much for that wonderful blessing, Father. We want you to know, Father, we don't take it for granted. And Father, as we prepare to do another worship service, Father, we pray that we do everything that is pleasing and acceptable in your eyesight so that you will receive it, Father. And most of all, Father, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus Christ, Amen. who came down from the riches of heaven, hung, bled, and died a cruel death, Father, giving us that opportunity, that hope, that one day we can spend eternity in your presence, thanking you forever and ever and ever. We ask all these blessings in your darling son, Jesus Christ's name. Let us open up our worship service. Humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. Humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord. Heaven's on the other side. Heaven's on the other side, after which we will have prayer and scripture. Basically, you're going to hear heaven's out there, right? 
he hung, bled, and died a cruel death on the cross at Calvary for the forgiveness of our sins. Yes. Father, for that, we want to say thank you. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us the opportunity to breathe the breath of life. From the beginning of our lives, Father, up until last night lying down and this morning waking up. That's right. Father, we want to say thank you. Thank you. Father, we can't thank you enough thank you. for all that you've done, and we've done nothing but sin against you, Father. So we ask you to forgive us. Father, as we continue through this service today, we pray that everything that is said and done will be pleasing and acceptable unto you. In your precious son, Jesus' name, amen. I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those book, out of those things which were written in the books according to their work. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And the death and death and hell delivered you, delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found was not found written in the book of of life was cast into the lake of fire amen next selection
Son, was God, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Now, when the centurion saw what was done, If you have not had the opportunity to secure a communion cup, if you would please raise your hand at this time, our ushers can assist you. As Christians, we are commanded to partake in this memorial feast, the Lord's Supper, on the first day of the week. Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper in Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 through 28. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. The frequency can be found in Acts 20 and the verses number 7. And the manner, 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 and 24 read, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us give thanks for the bread. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to take this bread, which is your body, which was broken on the cross. We pray that those who take this bread can reflect on the shame and on the suffering which you endured on the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may now take the bread.
Amen. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Let us give thanks for the cup. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to take this cup, which is your blood, which was shed on the cross for the remission of sins. We pray that those who take of this cup do so in a worthily manner, not condemning themselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may now take the cup. Verse 26 reads, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. The ushers will now come around and collect the remains. Come to another portion of service, which is giving. The frequency can be found, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. The manner can be found, 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 and 7. Scripture reads, He who soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. You can give via online. You can give in our mailbox. For those who wish to give now, please raise your hands, and our ushers will assist you at this time.
Let us now pray for the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for those who gave. We thank you so much for those who have the desire to give but not the means at this time. We ask and pray that they can do so at the next time. We ask and pray, Heavenly Father, that these gifts be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom and the spreading of the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. amen. Singing has been good. Amen. Thank you, Brother MC, Amen. for leading us in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in our hearts to the Lord. A piano would have messed that song up. A piano guitar just would have messed it up all together. And so we're thankful that we are able to worship as they did in the New Testament. Maybe you're visiting with us today, not a member of the Church of Christ. You're experiencing New Testament pattern of worship. Well, we'll sing, all the whole church is the choir. There's no choirs up here, all of us sing. Everyone must sing for themselves. And speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. Yeah, every individual worshiper must sing himself. So this is the way they did it in the New Testament. You didn't have no guitars, good fiddles, and drums and all that stuff going on. They had no beatbox and they had no Dougie Fresh stuff going on in worship. None of that was going on, all that stuff came later. And not, that was not in the Bible, no word in the Bible, no word. And they would pray, they would pray, they would pray, they would take the, they would pray uh, in, in worship. The worship was for God. Now, would worship, God is the audience in worship, but not, not for us. Uh, we worship him. God is the spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah, and then we take the Lord's Supper. Now, what, uh, you say, well, brother, but we take the Lord's Supper. Yeah, well, every Sunday, every Sunday. 
Every Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. This thing about, about Easter. Let me drop that on you now because I gave you an Easter sermon. I know you need one. Uh, but Easter, that word Easter is in he, Acts 12, 4. Now that word in the Bible has nothing to do with a rabbit laying chicken eggs. No, it had nothing to do with that. You know, if you had used common sense, you would know that could have came from God. A rabbit laying colored chicken egg has something to do with Jesus' resurrection. Now y'all to put a little common sense to that. You know that ain't come from God. That word Easter was Passover. That was a Judaism. That was for the Jews. There was no Christian. Nobody ever did anything like you see it going on today uh, with this uh, Easter thing. Every Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. Yeah, every Sunday. See, when Jesus got up on the first day of the week, that's why we come. What you said, we, some say, come to church, but church, uh, uh, we, we don't. We, we are the church. Amen. Amen. The church comes to assemble, and it's on Sunday. In the Bible, the, the, the weeks were named, it were in numbers, one, two, three through seven. In the, uh, under the Old Testament, the Jews, uh, they remembered the seventh day, the day of rest. Now, uh, there were no Christians over there in the Old Testament. Amen. Uh, see, you couldn't, eat, now this command uh, to remember Jesus was given by him uh, when he had his last supper in Matthew 26. Uh, with his apostles. Now he said to them a direct command, which is for us today. He said, this you do in remembrance of me. Amen. Now, we'll find in Acts 20 in verse 7, that upon the first day of the week, which is the Sunday that we call it, uh, the disciples, the Christians in the Bible, came together to break bread. So every Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. Now, it's sad to say, some even in the Lord's Church, I noticed yesterday on Facebook, uh, we're inviting people to their Easter service and uh, their Resurrection Sunday. Now, that's, that's false doctrine. Now, every Christian, understand, understand clearly. Uh, first of all, if you have not been washed in the blood, if you have not been baptized, then that communion won't do you no good. See, the step one is you got to get washed in the blood. See, baptism is where we contact the blood of Jesus. Revelation 1 and verse 5. That blood then washes away your sins. And then the Lord adds you to the church that will purchase with the same blood. Acts 20 and 28. Take heed therefore in yourself on the flock with the Holy Ghost that made you overseer of the feet of the church of God. Watch it now. Which he purchased with his own blood. So the church was purchased with the blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. So that, that blood washes away your sins. That blood purchased the church. And the command is, because blood is like chemotherapy. Here's how you look at it. Cancer will kill you if you don't put it in remission. So when the people killed Jesus on the day of Pentecost, Peter, they asked that Peter, Many brother, what shall we do? Peter said, here's what you do. Repent and be baptized. Watch it now. Every one of you. And what he, told me. he didn't tell them to pray no sinners prayer. He said, accept Jesus as personal Savior. No, no. Nobody did that in the Bible. Not one person. Not one person. Accept Jesus as personal Savior. Lord, I'm a sinner coming to my heart. Nobody did that. What they had, Peter said, repent and be baptized. Every one of you. Every, every one of you. Be, and be baptized. He said, then he told them why. For the remission of sin. See, now baptism is what puts your cancer, your deadly sin that's going to kill you in remission. The church is the hospital, the doctor is Jesus, and the medication to keep the sin from killing you is communion. Amen. So every Sunday, every Christian who's been washed in his blood is commanded to do this in remembrance of Jesus. Amen. Not once a year, not, not just on Easter Day. That's a, now every and let, me, let me drop this on the church of Christ. The church of Christ folk think they're going to heaven. They just missing Lord's Day. They missing worship. Uh, staying at home, doing it, doing it your way. You missing, missing communion. You you in sin. You in sin. You are in sin. Amen. If you miss worship and you miss taking this communion, you have you have violated a direct command from the Lord, and you cannot go to heaven because sin, everything sin touches, dies. 
And as soon as you, sin comes out of remission, you experience a spiritual death. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm going to try to drink the, suck the bottom out of this cup because Jesus said, drink ye all of it. You right. right. see, amen. It's water, say amen. Y'all right? It's Easter Sunday, y'all see it. I was just trying to give you Easter sermon. You got to get that one out the way first, though. Got to get these stuff. Got to get it out the way because people just ain't been taught right. People buy into everything. They buy in a fat man wearing a red suit on, on, at Jesus' birthday. Ain't got nothing to do with his birthday. Man just come in, and people just flock out that stuff. Well, y'all flock out the truth if you're going to flock out the stuff. Don't, don't run behind stuff man done made up. You know, good and well, ain't no man coming down no chimney. Got nothing to do with Jesus' birthday. You know, it seems like we ought to have better sense than that, don't it? Seems like to me we ought to have better sense. That's right, Church of Christ. And we don't have no reason to hold our head down either. But we, we hold to the truth. There's enough people out there doing it wrong. I mean, and, and there's a lot of people out there listening to me on the internet. I say, I say it like this, because they listen. And some of the members of the church need to. And some of these congregations know better than some of the stuff they're doing. You ought to know better. Amen. Amen. You ought to get out of them church buildings where they're teaching this kind of stuff. Get out of it, run. Run, because you're going to lose your soul following stuff like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now, you know, Brother Brooks ain't the popular preacher around town. I'm talking about but that don't, that don't bother me a bit. Never was. Jesus wasn't popular. They killed him. He just killed him, didn't he? He killed him. He had done nothing wrong with killing him. Now, let me give y'all the last part of this sermon. Now, this guy called the devil. I want y'all to think with me on this one now. Because every church building in Houston, in the world, is going to take the money every Sunday. Y'all got that? Now, all of us, listen to me now. Because this guy is nefarious. That means the devil is slick. He's, he's evil. He's smooth. But the devil knows the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, watch me now. Watch it now. Stay with me. If money, the love of money is the root of all evil. And Jesus dying was a greater love than no man than this that laid down life for a friend. The greater love was the death. So each of us are death row inmates. For, wow. Everything sin touches that. The wages of sin is death. Romans uh, 6.23. But the gift of God is eternal life. Now so watch this now. If sin is the reason we're going to go to the execution as a death row inmate, anyone who walks death row will head to the execution by fire. So the devil know if I can take the last supper away from him. Uh, Y'all know on death row they give you one last meal, right? Think about what I'm saying. The devil took from Christians, they call themselves Christians, he took your supper and he take your money. Think about this rascal. His name is Apollyon, Abaddon. He's, he's Beelzebub. He's the prince of darkness. He's a, he, he's a spiritual wicked ruler. And the ruler took from human beings the command to remember the supper so that you don't go to execution without your supper. Because the supper was commanded by the one who will pardon the execution. Oh, that's good preaching. Now, see, I like my own. I like my own preaching. Now, that's good stuff right there. Where I just got. I, I mean, I, now I just gave y'all some good. Now, that's that. that that's good. Now, think about it. Think about what he did. To everybody who's been in the church long, think about what I just said. The rascal took the supper. And every church in Houston will take that money every Sunday. And the pastor, so called guy, will tell them, well, you know, it don't say how often we ought to take the Lord's Supper. Yeah. Well, sure it don't. 
It, it don't say it. It doesn't. Oh, it, well, it, well, how often do we take money? Does it say that? Well, it does. Oh, it does. First Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. Uh, yeah, the, let every one of you lay by and store it. God has prospered you. There will be no gathering our God. So we got the money. And we use 1 Corinthians 16, 1 at the day we take it. Upon the first day of the week, is not a pastor in time going to disagree with me. Matter of fact, he's going to say, let's tie it and give it a little more. <laughs> See, he ain't going to disagree with me on that because the love is for money, not for Christ. Now, if we can use 1 Corinthians 16, verse 1, as the day they took collection, why can't we use Acts 20 and verse 7? Upon the first day of the week, the disciples came together to break bread. So we found two things they did on Sunday. They took bread, communion, and they took a collection. Amen. And why did they do it on Sunday? It was the resurrection, the day of the resurrection. Jesus, after he died on the cross, was buried in the barber tomb early on a Sunday morning. He rolled all power in his hand. Oh, so, yeah, don't let him take your supper. Now, here's what I want to let, let the sermon I'm preach this morning. The last stand. Okay. Now, this might be the last time when I give the invitation that you ever stand up. So, this Easter sermon, you don't want to take it for granted because, see, some of you here, because you came for friends and family day, that's right, that right? Yeah. And that's good that you did. But if I take this picture of this audience, Somebody going to die in this picture. Now, we take the portrait. We'll look back on it. Could be tomorrow. Could be two weeks from now. Might be a year from now. We look at the same group. They said, bro, he was there. Sir. He was there on that Easter Sunday. And he took his last. The last stand he took was when Brother Brooks gave the invitation. But the devil took his supper. And Brother Brooke told him about East on that day. See, you ain't here by accident or because you come to get a meal from the fellowship hall. Providence. God gives everybody a chance. How many of y'all believe God is the God of second chances? Amen. Amen. I want y'all to rethink that one. Second means one and two. But how many of y'all done had a chance to get yourselves together over and over and over again. How many of you only had one chance to get it together? Two. Have you not had chances over and over and over? Now, let me ask you another question. If you're here today and you're my friend or you're my family and I don't tell you you lost, then I don't love you. So how can I say you're my friend and my family? Now, I want you to be in my family because my family is called the church. My goal is to get you to stand up and walk down here so, and tell the devil, you're not taking my last supper. I'm going to drink my blood today. But you can't drink until we baptize you. You got to be baptized. Got, got to be baptized. It's commanded. That's what John said in Revelation 20, 20 he said, I saw the dead. You're going to help me as you do. Right? You know, every once in a while. Yeah. You, <laughs> okay, Ray Dreams, you're having fun with Dreams there. Good to have you reading for me. Yeah, we're trying to get to Revelation 20 then. Let's see. Now, he said, now, he said, now John, John now, the Revelation, book of Revelation. Scary book to some people. It's really just, it's a very simple book. It's really just a book of prophecy. The last book of prophecy tells what's going to happen. See, if some things happen during the time of Revelation was written, and then this piece here is what's going to happen. Now, every one of us is going to have to stand. He said, I saw the dead. Small and great. Now, now, great men, great men, great men. You know, you're great men. You think about the greatest man you can think of. Great men, rich men, famous men, people like that. Men and women. He said, I see, John, John, what you see? I see uh, great, great men. Small and great. People who ain't, uh, janitors got to stand before God. Right. Ditch diggers got to stand before God. CEOs got to stand. Presidents of the United States, and all y'all worried about Trump. Trump got to stand. Got to, got to stand. Amen. 
Some of you are worried about Biden. Some of you ride a donkey, other ride an elephant. I try to stay with the lamb. <laughs> Somebody ought to say amen. See, some of your folk don't got the word they hate these people. Y'all better stop hating these folk. God told us to remember them. He said, pray for them. He tell you to hate them. Amen. The voting is my civil duty. Your duty is to save the world. Amen. Our duty is to teach the truth and pray for the leadership of this world. Don't get caught up in that, that thing of hating folk. You can't get to heaven hating nobody. Amen. Jesus died for him just like he died for me. Right. Amen. Amen. Amen, you D's and R's. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I know. I hear them talking, the Christians talking like that, ain't got no sense. We love all mankind. Amen. You understand that? Amen. Jesus died for Pilate, just like he died for Caiaphas and, and Herod and King Herod. All them guys took him to court. He hadn't done nothing wrong. He died for them. Pete, Judas kissed him. Jesus washed his feet. The, poly, the political folk, they, got, they really quiet on me now because they, they don't took their positions. Well, take your position. I am not taking it back. Go mess around and lose your soul over that kind of stuff. Focus on Jesus. The best thing we can do is try to save these folk. Amen. Amen. Teach them the truth. Amen, somebody. That's what America needs, good Christian people that follow the rules of the law. Right. Yeah. yeah. I saw them dead, small and great. Well, you see, John, eight days before God, and the books are open. everybody got to stand. You going to stand, I'm going to stand. Every knee will bow, Romans 14, 11. Every knee will bow. Every mouth will confess that Jesus Christ, you going to do it. Every one of us, going. y'all understand, we're going to have to stand. Got to boot. Got to go to judgment. He said, stand before God and what? The books, will, the 66 books of the Bible going to be open. John 12, 48, Jesus, he that rejected me, received it, not my word, had one that judged him, the words I've spoken, the same would judge in the last day. We're going to get judged from this very book that none of us read. Many people don't read the Bible. Amen. Just take what folks say. I mean, so don't take what folks say when it comes to your soul. Amen. You got to believe the book. I mean, how many of y'all believe the Bible is right? Amen. Got to believe it's right. Amen. The only way to get to heaven is to believe this book right. Romans 10, 17, faith coming by what? Hearing, hearing by the word of God. And then, then Hebrew writer come back and say, without faith, it's impossible to please God. If you don't believe in the Bible, so well, I don't know if the Bible right. But I say, well, do you believe in Jesus? Watch this oxymoron. I believe in Jesus, but I just don't believe in the Bible. Now, where do you think the information came from? If that ain't if that big word oxymoron, that's a good word. I don't know. I'm from Hillfield. They, they say that something don't make no sense. Is that right? How are you going to say out of one side of my mouth, I believe in Jesus, the other side of my mouth, I don't believe in the Bible, and that's the only book to tell us about him? You ain't see Jesus in no Jerusalem? You ain't see him on no cross? And you go around talking about, Gee, I love Jesus, but that Bible, I just don't believe it. Well, if Jesus, if anything in the Bible is wrong, right. what makes Jesus right? Amen. Where did that come from? <laughs> Somebody always say, I'm going to let y'all go eat here in a minute. But yeah, we got to finish, though. How I'm doing so far? Good to see, brother. Good to see, brother. This is right. Oh, it looks like a homecoming. A lot of y'all ain't seen in a long time. Some of you got stuck with that pandemic. We ain't seen you since the pandemic. Where you been? <laughs> Watch out. We ain't seen you some of y'all. We ain't seen some of y'all since you got on the conference call. You still on the call? Well, you need to come back to the church, Bill. Don't you think it's time to repent and come on? That's what you need to do. You're going to have to stand up now. You may, may, you're going to have to take your stand here in a minute. Got to stand up. Got to stand up. If the last stand, everybody got to stand before God. The book's open. And another book. And another book. Another, that's the book, of life. the book of life. Now, here's the thing about it. Everything you ever done is written. Yes, sir. Do you know there's some stuff that, that, that God know about me that I don't want you to know? Now, see all these saints and here with these halos on, act like they ain't got no stuff in the closet. No. Amen. Somebody, yeah, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Uh, the Bible teaches us this. Here's the one thing you want to make sure you don't go to jail. You don't want to stand before God with this stuff on your record. No, and no, you don't. See, Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 12, 13, he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Yes. What, what is the matter? It's the matter of life. Doing your life. He said, we ought to fear God and keep his commandment. Watch it now. Watch it. Watch it. But this is the whole duty of man. What's the duty of man doing this life? Did you fear God and did you keep his command? Now, here's a command. If you're not keeping it, now, now Brother Brooks told you. 
Because you was at Easter Sunday at Hollow Heights, or you were listening to me out there on that internet, and Brooks told you that you're going to lose your soul. God, you are not, you're breaking this command. You, you didn't fear God enough to keep the command. Now, you can't say you didn't know. I took it away from you. Because if you stand before God without getting this forgiven, he going to bring it up. I see here old Brooks was preaching. Yeah. Tommy Brooks, that boy always told him straight up. <laughs> old Brooks, well, my sir, he preached that cross too, man. He told him about my son on the cross. I see, look at, he told him about his blood, washing baptism. Let's see what else he told you. Oh, he told you about my son's church. Purchased it with his blood. It's his wife. He told you about that. When you stayed on the internet, you was on the, you was at home. (laughs) You you had your pajamas on, drinking your coffee. And uh, you thought you was worshiping me, huh? What, 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 what did you, you forsook the assembly? Ever since I sent that pandemic to the world, you, you just jumped right on board and went to the convenience store, didn't you? I see that right here on your record. The book's open. Oh, I see. He gave the invitation at the end. You could have went back down and got baptized. They had the water. They had clothes for you. I see that you could have got baptized that day. You didn't. See, all this stuff coming up. Now, he told you you weren't supposed to remember my son. Now, I noticed here that you wasn't remembering before you heard, Brooks, and you didn't start remembering my son after you heard him. Now you got to stand before me. Now, how do you think I feel about that since that was my son? How do you think I feel about this when I saw the travail of my child? How do you think I feel about this matter when they whipped him with a whip and I had to watch it? How do you think I feel? I'm talking about the father now. you standing before God. How do you think I feel about the matter when my son was in the garden of Gethsemane crying, let this cup pass, but not my will, your will. How do you think I feel when they whipped him? How do you think I feel? About this matter, it's on your judgment thing. You stand before me now. Don't say nothing. How do you think I feel when they put the crown of thorns on his head? How do you think I feel about you? When the people mocked him, slapped him, spit on him. How do you think I feel when my son tried to carry a tree? How you think I feel about you? When my son, the soldier stripped him naked, it was my son. You don't want to remember? It was my son on the cross with nails in his hands and his feet. How you think I feel when you sitting at home and drinking your coffee as if nothing happened? How you think I feel? I'm just saying this is your stand. God, you got you, you ain't can't, nothing you can do but stand there and listen. I see here you didn't do it. Do you know it was him that was my only child that I so loved you that I would allow them to treat him like that? To drive the nails in his hand, brother, right? And in his feet. And shame on the church of Christ who have left the New Testament pattern of worship. Amen. How y'all think God going to feel about us doing what we want to do? How y'all think he feel about this? How y'all think these preachers going to stand before God? You done took away the truth. You done, you done left the truth. You done went to worldly ways of bringing them in. When Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. The drawing power of salvation is the cross. We defeated Satan on the cross. Satan's greatest defeat was the cross. How y'all think God gonna feel when he was on Jesus on the cross? Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabbath, and I, my God, my God. Why? How you think God feel? How you God gonna say? How you think I feel? My son was crying to me, and I left. I left him there. 
Could have sent legions of angels, but we didn't. He had to stay on the cross for you to go to heaven, for you to be forgiven, for you to be able to drink the blood of the New Testament. We were shed for many for the remission of sins. How y'all feel about this matter? I said, Brother Brooke, what are you trying to do? What you mean what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to mess your head up with this thing. You need to think differently. What if it was your son? Would you be okay with us just doing whatever we want to do? I would not be. And some of you church kind folks think you got a ticket in. You got to be faithful to get to heaven. Amen, somebody. Amen. Books are open. I see here, yeah. He told you about my son up on that cross, nails in his hands and his feet. Soldiers gambling over my son's clothes. You know that? I see he told you about that. How you, th- how you think I'm going to feel with you standing before me and you didn't even take the, you didn't take the offer I gave you? You took the offer of Satan over me. Yeah. See, Satan offers you opportunity to leave here and die in your, cell, in your sin and go to hell. That's what that, Satan offers. See, you can't have, see, this is what you see today, too. But my word goes on, see it. A lot of stuff on my mind. Because, because the devil is real. This devil, he's right here with us. Like, don't y'all forget him. He's here and he don't like what's going on. He don't, like the, he don't like unity. He don't like growth. He don't like two walking together that can agree. He loves, he, he loves division. Amen. And he knows we are our greatest enemy. Because if me and him against each other, there is no God in it. You see that? But when me and him connects with God, we are all right. But when God's out the picture, Satan don't need to help us because we both don't understand we're in a fight. If you don't know you're in a fight, you ain't going to win the fight. Huh? The devil got us, y'all. And he knows. Some of y'all are going to leave here. He said, brother, I, I don't serve the devil. If you don't, you, can't, you ain't got but two options. Now, now listen carefully now. You, you serve whoever you obey, Romans 6, 16, 17, 18. Serve, if you're serving God, you're going to be worshiping. You're going to get baptized. You're going to be taking the Lord's Supper every Sunday. You're going to be coming to worship. You're going to be a member of the one church, two churches, called the Church of Christ. There's only one in the Bible. So well, I don't believe that. Well, I know you're having a problem with the whole Bible. See? Why y'all so quiet on Easter Sunday? You're supposed to be. Got your Easter hats. Got the Easter hats on, the Easter dresses. Is that right? We'll spend a lot of money on them new clothes. Got a basket full of eggs. I ought to be happy to it. See, this sermon don't make you happy to it. Does it? Does it make you happy? Huh? Is that what it's doing? No, I don't suppose it make you happy. It will educate you. Amen. What, what, what are you saying? You know what I'm saying. You got to stand before God. I just gave you the book of deeds. He said, now, listen, let us hear the conclusion of home. That's Solomon saying of the whole matter, we should fear God keep his command. Watch this in verse 14. Ecclesiastes 12, 13, 14 said, For God shall bring every work into judgment. Watch this now. With every secret thing. How many of y'all got some secrets? <laughs> I praise the name of Jesus. I'm going to turn this way. Y'all ain't got no secrets? Mm-hmm. Ma, got some secrets? I, got, I had some. But here's the thing about baptism. Wash every secret away. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, that's a good thing. Y'all missed it, right? That's, that's, that's right there. That's the good news. The good news is you don't have to stand before God with a secret. See, so once you get washed in the blood, God said your sin, I remember no more. He said, brother, I remember he didn't say for you to forget it. You don't want it to come up on judgment. Because God shall bring every work unto judgment where every single thing, watch, watch, be good and evil. Yes, See, some of you all, what I want you to do, all of you over here ain't been baptized. When I give the invitation, what I want you to do, I want you to come on down here today. Well, I want, we're going to baptize uh, as many as we can today. What we're going to do, we're going to baptize as many of y'all we can. See, what, I want, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give the invitation in a minute. Now, what I want, I want every person 
who has uh, been listening to me intellectually, that's, that's smart enough to understand that this man is talking to me directly. And God is using him to get me the message. What I want you to do is come get washed in the blood this morning. We're going to wash you up. See, God going to fix everything under the water. And then he's going to put you in the chair, and we're going to fight this fight together. See, you don't want to fight by yourself. And what was God's family for, right? Is that right, Hollow High? We got to fight this thing together. We've been fighting for a long time. We fight together all, all kinds of stuff. We done fought against it. Is that right? That was a bad dude. Bad dude. That's the way we talk in country. Bad dude. And then the members of the church, this is what I want you to do. The people who, uh, you, know, you, you know you've been gone way too long, don't you? Huh? You don't know? You know you've been gone too long. It's time for you to come on, to, come on back to the church. Amen. Come on back and get involved. Come, get, uh, repent of your sins today. Ask God to forgive you. Don't leave without asking for forgiveness. We're going to ask you when you, at the last, this is the last stand, that's the sermon. The last, the last stand is going to be the invitation because it could be your last one. I'm trying to get you to come to the front. Everybody who needs prayer, I want them to come up here. Everybody who, who needs to be baptized, I want you to come up here. If you brought a visit, ask them, do you want to get baptized? You, you need, now, here's the thing. A husband can bring his wife, a wife can bring a husband, but if they don't want to come, you come by yourself. Because you can't save your wife, you can't save your husband, and ain't nobody going to stand before for God but just you and him. See, ain't nobody going to step and say, well, I'll take care of this one. No, no, no. God said, hey, you, can, you just stay in line. Now, if you stand up there by me, and I step forward, you step forward, and he says something to you, I'm going to say, don't look at me, I told you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to keep on there, right? I'm going to say, well, no, I want to hear him say, now, we don't go, Chris don't go to judgment to get told what they did wrong, because he said he ain't going to remember, he'd be lying. Well, he's just going up there to hear him say, well done. That's this afternoon. You don't want to die a goat. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You, are, you are understand. When I stand up, I'm, I just, well, I'm just going to hear him say, well done. That good. How many of y'all want to hear him say, well done? That's all you want. See, if you got well done, ain't no sins coming up. But if he start reading off that stuff about what you did today, oh, Brooks. <laughs> I like you. I like, when, I like when he called my name. The Lord, see, they, your name got to be in the book. He said, well, how he call your name? See, now, the book says, he said, I saw the dead small and great stand before God, and the books were open. Another book was open, it was the book of life. And the judge would judge out those things that were written in the book. Read. And then he said, what? Well, according to everything he did. And see, the, book, the things that he's going to judge on were all you did while you were living. Works just mean obedience. What did you do? And then he says that. And the sea gave up the dead. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. And the death and hell delivered up the dead. Now, death and hell, death and hell, death and hell. Death, there won't be no more, there won't be no more dying in this, on, in, at the judgment. There won't be no graveyards. It's, 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 it's all over with. That's right. You ain't going to a graveyard, you're going to another place. You see? <laughs> and then he said what? And they were judged, every man, according to their work. All right, we don't. Keep reading. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Yeah, go ahead. This is the second day. Uh-huh. Now here it is, who I want, here's, there, here's, there, there's another book called. He said, whoever in the book, of, in the book of life, life was cast in the lake of Now in Philippians 4, 3, Paul talked about some co-laborers that name were in the book of life. See, the reason he's going to call my name is because my name is in the book. See, don't want guys to get, you want him to call, see, if you step up there and he say, hey, hey, right, that means good, you good. Once he call your name, it's in the book. Yes, sir. I want to hear him call about it. Don't you, bro, right? Bro, right here. Come on, Ron. He probably may call you by your first name. Step on in here, Ron. Oh, Ron, step up there to God. Yeah, well done, Ron. He ain't, come, he ain't gonna tell him anything you ever done wrong. How many of y'all got your name in the book? Amen. Huh? Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. You got your name in the book? Yeah. Bro, bro, how I know if you've been washed in the, in the blood, your name is in the book. Whoever, whosoever, though, was not found written in the damn book of life was cast into the lake of fire. He said, what, what is that? That's hell. Now, we don't like to talk about hell, and I know you don't. But um, we, we'll close with this. Go Matthew 16, Mark, uh, 16 uh, Luke 16, right quick, brief, briefly. Quick, quick. I got five more minutes. I'm going to try to do it by 1015. So at 1015, what we're going to do, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna call this thing good at 1015. How about that? Y'all good with that? Amen. Right, well, I, know, I know they got some good food over there, too. Though. I said Luke 16. Verse 19. Start verse 19. Now, watch this. Watch this now. There was a certain... Yeah. Rich man, now here it come, here it come. Which were clothed in purple and fine linen. Mm -hmm. And fared sumptuously every day. Yeah, yeah. 
And that's the, that's the great guy. There, there was a certain rich man for something every day reading. And there was a certain beggar. And now this is a small guy. Remember small and great standing before God? The rich man was a great guy. The beggar was a poor guy. It is small and grace. Then both God in the books of old Breed. Laid in the cave. Yeah. Full of sword. Full of sword, yeah. And designed to be fair for the crowns which fell from the rich man's table. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sword. Now he had, now he poor thing, he had nurses. Dogs had to be his nurses when he got sick. Yeah. The, the, it seemed like he in bad shape, don't he? Ain't no God in his life at all, don't it look like? Dogs had to take care of his sword. Man, it looked like he in bad shape. Rich man got to stand, the beggar got to stand. Read. And it came to pass. It came to pass. That the beggar died. Uh oh, both of them died. The beggar died. The small died. It was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. Uh, read on. And the rich man also died. Now, the great died, and the small dies. Read. It was buried. Uh huh, it was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Now, in hell, that's a place called Hades. When you die, remember Jesus said, uh, Upon this rock, I'll build my church, gates of hell, said I prevail. That means the grave. The, 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 the Hadean world, with the big word for saying, that's where you go after you die. There ain't nobody in heaven yet. You know how they say we're going to have a home going somewhere? Ain't nobody in heaven. Everybody, every, yeah, one or two places. This place here is called uh, hell, which is the, 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 the boat of the dead. The spirits are there. Now read on. He said what? He, now notice this guy, already, he, as soon as he died, he's already being tormented. He ain't stood before God because this ain't the great Gehenna, which is going to be the, the, cat, the lake of fire. This ain't the lake of fire here. This is just as soon as you die and you didn't take this communion, you're going to feel the heat. He said, Brother Bruce, that's what I don't like, that hell if I preach. I know nobody want to go to hell, but you don't want to hear about it. And look at the book say now. And see if Abraham afar off. Now he's seen Abraham afar off. Read. And Lazarus in his book. Oh, he also noticed Lazarus. Notice whose name they called. Rich man, he never called his name. Lazarus' name is being mentioned. Why? His name is in the book of life. Read. And he cried and said. Now, too late to cry. Now, the last stand here in five minutes. It's too, too, too late to cry. Cry now. Father Abraham. He said, Father Abraham. Have mercy on me. Now, too, too late for mercy then. No mercy. Mercy now. Cry, cry now. Mercy now. Then no mercy. No crying. Read. And send Lazarus. Uh-huh. Now he's going to send somebody else. Help me out. Bro, uh, Brother Brooks here to help you. He's talking about send Lazarus. Now he know. He remember that he, had, he didn't have no amnesia or dementia. He remember that man. That's how you ought to be careful how you treat people. Yes, sir. <laughs> he said, he said, said Lazarus, what? That he may dip the tip of his finger in water. Now, he wants some water now. Now, there's some water right there. Now, too late for water. When you die, too late for water. All he wanted was a tip. Just dip. Just a tip, tip, just a little drop of water. Cool off this place. Man, I'm telling you, water now. Mercy now. Cry now. Baptize now. Water now. Read. And cool my yeah, cool, cool me down. It's hot. Read. Boy, I'm tormented in this land. Yeah, read on. But Abraham said, Yeah. Son. Now, he, now Abraham, being one of the patriarchs of the Bible, he said, Son, now, uh, remember that. Remember, now, I want you to I want to remind you something. In your lifetime, Receive it by good and faith. You were doing good, look like. You had all your money and stuff, didn't you? You look like you, now some of y'all got good cars, BMWs and Mercedes and nice cars and everything, and, and going to bust hell wide open. Now you're looking good. Got all this good stuff in your life. Well, don't say it like that. You don't, I'm the preacher. Need to say it. Some of us need to say it. Uh, is that right? Some people got to hear it just like that. And if, they don't, if it ain't helping you, just, they don't worry about it. it ain't, don't worry about it. It ain't helping you. Let it help somebody else. Amen. Yeah, you're going to bust hell wide open if you don't straighten up. Did the book say? And likewise, Laz Lazarus, evil thing. Yeah. Keep on reading. Hurry now up. He is uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. And besides all this, uh -huh. between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. He said, between all this, there's something between here and there. He can't go from one place to the other. When you when you die, you can't go from one place to the other place. You can't be. I want to be saved today. It's too late then. You can't go over there with uh, with Lazarus. Read. So that they which will pass from hence to you cannot. You can't do it. Read on. Oh, here we go. Now we're getting down, down to the friends and family. Watch what he said. Then he said, <laughs> he said what? I pray thee, therefore. Now, this man said, I want, I, want, I want you to do something for me. Father Abraham, what you want me to do? That I would ascend him to my father. Now, go to my, my, my what? Father's house. Go to my family. See, if I'm telling you the truth this morning, 
and you get baptized, the first place you go is to your family. And say, y'all, we got to get in this blood. That's right. <laughs> you know, we, we, that's what you do. You love your family. This is friends and family. You say, hey, look, at, we got to be drinking this every Sunday. That man made it claim, pl- plain. The devil done took your supper from you. You gonna let him beat you up? He done had you to prison. He had you on drugs. He done took your wife from you. You've been in divorce court. You've been broke. You ain't got no old piece of junk car. It's smoking. You... <laughs> the devil been whooping you good, don't you see? He done took everything from you. Just making you try to, and then gonna take your supper. The devil's something else, isn't he? And then he said, what? Now he said, go get my five brothers. How many brothers did he have? Five. How many brothers y'all got? Two. He got two. I had three. Two. One of them got killed in a car wreck. Another one still living. I got one brother living. But I don't want to get down there and say, go tell Carter, because Carter already know. See, I don't have to go back and say, go tell him, because I already told my family. Everybody come to my family, I tell them. My dear sister, Charlie, uh, she, she could, you know, she grew up Baptist. Good, good people in Baptist. All good people. Uh, but we all, she, she had a problem with Church of Christ, Brother Cat. She had a problem with Church of Christ. My sister, my oldest. Y'all, y'all remember Charlie? Yeah, yeah. Charlie had a problem with Church of Christ. Boy, she, y'all folks, like y'all don't want to go there. Yeah, you, I know Charlie. Just keep loving her. Came, one day she came, I just don't understand the truth. I don't understand the difference, Tommy. I took a little piece of paper uh, at my dinner table and showed her how sin separates from God and baptism washes sins away. And the Lord put it uh, to save them in the church. And in one church, it's in the Bible, it's the church of Christ. That's all we're saying, Charlie. Sunday morning, that was Saturday, Sunday morning, she walked down the aisle. She took her stand and walked. Amen. My whole family cried, the last one with a hard-headed self. She said, hard-headed as she could be. Charlie was just as hard-headed as she could be. But well, came a day when she was ready, boy. Amen. See, you don't have to beat it into them. When they're ready for it, they'll run to it. Amen. If you had good sense this morning, you'd run down here. Amen. If you had good sense, you'd run. You wouldn't, ain't no way anybody with good sense would leave like I'll preach a sermon like this. Ain't no way you would leave. If you had good sense. Ain't no way you could leave knowing you could get killed out there. Bro, Nate was just telling me, he, he T-boned somebody in that big old ugly truck he got. I got a red truck. He loved mine. But that one, I, you hit somebody last week? Got pulled out in front of him and said, y'all more kill him. It wasn't his time. There's somebody you can pull out here and, and, and just like that, be dead. Huh? What are you saying, brother? Bro, you got to stand. You, you, how you going to stand? You could die today. Hey, you ought to come down here. And that's what he said, go tell the family. He said, nah, too late. Too late for water, too late to pray, too late for mercy. But what, what, what are we doing now? Here we are. We're at the end of this sermon. That's enough of that. How many people want to go to heaven? Raise your hand. Amen. How many want your name in the book of life? Amen. Here's what I want you to do. The gospel message is this. And I, I preached it a while ago when I was talking about how Jesus came to the world and how they beat him. That's all good news. All that suffering he went through, was to give you this chance when you stand up, you remember that Jesus was beat up so bad that he was on that cross six hours so you could walk down here today. Amen. And shame on you if you turn down the invitation. Because he said, come to me, all you that labor and have a labor, and I'll give you rest. Right. The good news is that you can come right now and become a Christian. You have to hear. I mean, y'all hear that Jesus died and was buried rogue. Y'all believe that? Yes. If you believe it, that's number two. Number three, you got to repent. What do you mean, brother? You got to make a decision. But just like you made a decision, you come. You can make, man, you know what? I ain't leaving like I came. No way. I'm going to make my decision. Soon that man say, come, I'm going. Anybody already made that decision? You can start walking. Next thing you're going to do is confess. I said, well, I'm going to ask you, do you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God? There was a man in Acts 8. He asked him that. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he stopped the chariot and baptized him. We can't baptize You got to make the confession. You got to say it. You going to say it now or you say it at the last stand? Every knee going to bow and every mouth going to confess. Is that right? How many of y'all have made that confession before? I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. See, everybody, before they get baptized, got to say this. I be- say it with me. I believe that Jesus Christ is. Jesus said, here's what Jesus said. If you will confess me in front of people, I will confess you up there. If you deny me, I'm going to deny you. Now, that's what the Lord said. That's Matthew 10, 32 and 33. The one you say you love. How many people need to say that? All of us better say it. You say it while you got good use of your mind. 
And, and the way I'm preaching, if people who are insane, uh, insane Solomon, a mind's come and go. They, they'll catch this coming if you miss it going. You can't miss the truth. If you're stuck in the truth, you can't miss it. It's easy. You got to come down here. We're going to baptize. We got the water ready, clothes ready, everything ready. Y'all, is that right? We got a song leader ready? What's your song? Uh, Pass me not. So here's what I want to do. The last stand. Click. The picture has been taken. And the roll going to be called. And this stand may be your last one. Before the stand. Before God. Is that good teaching? That's good teaching right there. And who I want you to do. I want members of the church that you're going through some stuff. I don't went through some stuff. How many of y'all don't went through some stuff lately? Man, I don't went through some stuff. How many of y'all have lost, lost loved one, gone through some, been grieving, dealing with the thing? Look here, look here. Let me say this to you. What God did, what gave us a crying family. So when you cry, I cry. When you laugh, I laugh. Sometimes we laugh together. Sometimes we cry. And then the time we share together, heartaches and sighs. Then the time we dream together. How it's going to be when the saved get to heaven. Ask God's family. So I, if you're going through something, what I want you to do, if you need prayer, as, a, as you need prayer, we're going to pray. What we know, we're going to pray for everybody who's going, this, this, this friend's family, we're going to pray for everybody. Russ Dark going to come up. I'm going to have Russ Dark come up. Here. Ministers going to be, we're going to pray for y'all. What we're going to do, we're going to pray for y'all uh, when, when you come. Now, everybody over here that need prayer and you're going through something, don't worry about what it is. I want you to come down here and stand with Brother Brew. Now, I want you to come. And those who need to make confession, you say, Brother Brew, I've been gone a long time. That's all right. Now's the day to come back. Come on back today. Come, come up here and say, Brother, I have sinned. I'm coming home. That's all you need to do. That's it. And third prayer, you got to be baptized. I want you to come down here with me. I'm going to take your confession. Well, I want you to come stand with me, and I'm going to take your confession. Now, here's what you don't want. If Jesus passed you out now, pass you by now, pass me not, O oh, gentle Savior. He wants you to come. He don't want to pass you up. Amen. Because on the day of judgment, he cannot help you right. on the day of judgment. Right. Jesus is calling this morning, come unto me, all you labor, heaven labor. What I want you to do, if you, if you are subject to them, you, you want the prayer, you want to make a confession, or get back. Don't sit where you are and send them cards down here. You walk down here, make your commitment to the Lord today as together we stand and sing the song of encouragement. Amen. Come to him. Come to him. Come to him. God bless you. Come. Come to him this morning right here. We're going to pray with you. We're going to baptize you. We're going to bring you back home. Come on. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. Don't, don't let nothing stop. Come, come on. Come on to the Lord. Come on. God bless you. Come on. They coming. They coming. They, they, they coming. Come on. Come on to God. Don't let nothing stop you. This is your time. Come to the Lord. Come to the Lord. Let him in your life this morning. Let him in your life this morning. Let him in your life. Let him in. Savior. Oh, Savior. Why don't you? Why don't you? Here. My humble cry. Why? Don't let, don't let him pass you out. Come on to the Lord. Let him in your life. Some have come. Many others need to come to the Lord. Come to him. How about you back there? Wouldn't you come to the Lord this morning? Let him in your life. Let him in your life this morning. Let him in your life. Wouldn't you come to him? Why would you pass this opportunity up? Wouldn't you come to the Lord this morning? Find that sweet relief. <laughs> when you come, when you come, last stand. Is there somebody over here who need to come to the Lord? Don't pass it up. Come to him this morning. Let him in your life. I'm calling you. Oh, Savior. Savior, why don't you, why don't you, why don't you, here, God bless you, oh, come on, God bless you, come on, come on, come on to him, come on, come on to him, God bless you, just come, come on, come on, come on to the Lord, come on to the Lord, let him in your life, let him in, let him in, let him in, Jesus is calling you. Hmm.
Let's do mercy, Lord. This is what I want to do. I want to do here. How many of y'all like mercy, grace? Grace, mercy. There was a, there was a man one time. Uh, he coming home to his family, right? And uh, he he pulled up to the house. Was on fire. And he, he he was running in. His wife and his daughter was in the house. In the house. And the house was on fire. And so he he, he rushed on his way in to try to rescue his family. Another man came out, running. And he got in there, he saw his wife had been killed and raped, and his daughter had been killed and raped. And he thought about that guy. Was the one who killed my wife and my child. And raped my wife. So he turns out and he runs out after him and get out there, the man that got hit by a car. He's in the middle of the road, bleeding. Bleeding to death. And he stood over and he said, man, justice the man, you die. Because you did that to my family. And you deserve to die. This step back, mercy came to him. But mercy says, you did it, but you don't deserve to die. And then grace stood up in the man. He said, even though you did it, whether you deserve it or not, I'm going to save you. See, whether you want to be saved or not, God done his part. But justice says, you walk out like you came. You deserve to die. But mercy says, God gave you this chance. And grace said, Brother Brooks, give him another song called Mercy, Lord. And this verse is for those who are real close to coming because the devil done won in your life so much. He's doing it now and he's the winner and you are the loser. You on death row and he laughing at you. And all he can't wait till they put you in the chair. What I want you to do, we got those who come already. I want, I want to know if there's two other people that need the Lord this morning. Anybody else need the Lord? Well, I want you to do this mercy Lord. Like one verse of song and then we're going to take confession and perfect grace. One verse. Y'all know this one? Is there anybody else? Very young. Several have come. How about you? When you come this morning, who is it? Who's that person I'm talking to? Who is that person I'm talking to? The mercy, Lord. Lord, you will see. You see. There be a place. And uh, I know there's one other one, one more, one somebody, one somebody, one somebody, maybe what? You real close to coming, come to the Lord. Be Lord upon me, and Lord, the mercy. Who need that mercy this morning? I'm a a weary pilgrim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I thank you for your blessing. And that I possess Lord you'll see you'll see there'll be a place for me and I'm going there someday in there someday